you know, we were talking yesterday about Brady's future and how Miami just jumps off the page at you um, because, uh, you know, if, if Brady's looking for a spot where there's a running game and a defense and weapons, that's it. There's no question about that. And then we all know that Brady knows how to find Stephen Ross's number and or boat where it's docked. So uh, with those conversations, I'm like, I got to call Florio. So let's give you the floor here. We all know they've said that's two of the two is the future. W- what do you think about that possibility? Well, first of all, based upon one specific play that I saw in the third quarter of Monday night's game, I would suspect Tom Brady is considering joining the Cobra Kai dojo because he has proven quite adept at sweeping the leg. I saw that. That was quite, that was quite a moment. That was quite an eye-opener and disappointing to anyone who cares about good sportsmanship and clean, fair play. That aside, speaking of not clean, fair play, that's how the Dolphins lost a first-round pick last year, tampering with Sean Payton and Tom Brady. I was told last week that Miami is definitely on the table for Tom Brady. The question this year is, Rich, will the Dolphins be interested in him? Now, in the past, they've denied interest, and then it turns out that they were. In 2020, Stephen Ross, not long before the Dolphins hosted the Super Bowl that same week, why would he be interested in us? Well, they were interested in him last year. They downplayed it. They were going to have him purchase a small piece of the team. And then as the dominoes fell, Peyton becomes the head coach at some point in the spring offseason program. Brady ends up playing for the Dolphins. So this whole Tua thing is strange to me because I said this all week, actions are going to speak much more loudly than words. They can say he's our starter until they pick up his fifth-year option, which they could do right now if they wanted to, Mm -hmm. or until they sign him to a long-term contract. It's possible they will go in a different direction. I think that after what they went through in 2021 with Deshaun Watson hovering over the team for weeks and what it did to Tua psychologically and emotionally – I don't think they want to put him through that, especially at the time when he's still trying to recover from this concussion. So I think they're being deliberately careful to tiptoe around Tua because they don't want to complicate his situation any more than it already is. But how could you not be thinking about other options if you're the Dolphins? How could you not be? I, I, you know, Dolphins fans and specifically the various members of Tua and on get upset when I articulate this, but if you're going to put yourself in a position where you get ragdolled by a 300-pound defensive lineman and you're an average-sized human – i.e. a small quarterback, your head's going to hit the ground. Every time he had a concussion this year, whether it was two or whether it was three, it was his head hitting the ground, not someone hitting his helmet with another helmet. Until that changes, he's going to be at risk for more concussions. And he's the only quarterback this year that had multiple concussions other than Kenny Pickett of the Steelers, and, and Pickett didn't happen in such a dramatic way that he became the face of concussions in the NFL. It's just a bad situation for Tua and for the Dolphins. So whether it's Brady, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, they have to look at all their options. And I think they will. They're not going to admit it. Tua's the guy until he's not. And we've seen that time and again with other coaches and players in the NFL. He's our guy until the moment that he isn't. So what is Brady's market right now if that is, in fact, what he wants to enter and not uh, just begin his broadcasting career that's ready and waiting for him whenever he wants? What do you well, think? I think one of the real questions here is proximity to family members, proximity to his children. San Francisco, he's wanted to go to San Francisco. They've said no thank you. I can't see the 49ers saying yes to him this year, and I don't think he'd want to go that far. The Raiders, obvious potential destination because of the presence of Josh McDaniels. Tennessee has been mentioned. I think Carolina is one to watch. If Sean Payton ends up there, who's his quarterback? And I feel like these two are determined to find a way to work together, especially after what happened last year. They were ready to go last year. It was ready to happen. Mm. The Brian Flores lawsuit threw everything askew. But wouldn't it be fitting? Sean Payton, who was suspended for Bounty Gate, Tom Brady, who was suspended for Deflate Gate, they join <laughs> forces and give a giant middle finger to 345 Park Avenue, and they go to Carolina, especially a year after they weren't able to go to Miami. And I just I get the sense. That, that they both kind of would like to say they had a year where they worked together because Brady understands that Peyton is the master of designing offense and spending extra time to find that play that's going to work for the guys he has, next-level creativity and just overall brilliance. So I'm keeping an eye on Carolina. If Peyton ends up being the coach of the Panthers, 
I don't know why you wouldn't have Tom Brady at the top of the list as potential quarterbacks for 23 there. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.